Labs iGEM team, research iGEM team. We are from Kansas, all the way out west. We live near Kansas City, and that is our trademark symbol, so you have to ask my teacher Eric Kessler if you want to use it. <laughs> we go to something called the Center for Advanced Professional Studies. It is an area school, which you need to apply for, from five different Blue Valley schools. It's a public school system. And what they do is you sign up for a strand that's an emerging business like bioscience is what we're in. Now, they, all my team members, they applied. I was recruited. I'm from a private school. They just thought I was so smart that I didn't have to apply. I'm going to choose a team. My name's Tim Schaefer. I'm hoping to attend John Hopkins to study girls. Uh, I don't think I have that anymore. From the, the greater Kansas City area, Brain Bee Champion, which means I know a lot about neurology. And... I'm also applying for my dream school, West Point. That's me at West Point, summer seminar. It was a week long, just push up, marathon. This is Graham Waymeyer. He's majoring in microbiology at Kansas. He's interning at Dr. Susan Egan's lab at KU as a freshman. That's quite an achievement. This is Jonah Hammerson. He's majoring in biological chemistry at Tulane University in New Orleans. You know he's got some funny Mardi Gras. Um, he likes to call James Bond. He has a very cute baby, as you can see. <laughs> this is Ryan McLean. He's <laughs> pharmacy at the University of Kansas, and he likes to be called Mr. Clean. <laughs> also, Ronnie Cass and Brendan Wilkin were on the team, but they could not make it here, so we have a little moment of silence for those two lame to show up. Okay, that's it. <laughs> also, the University of Wisconsin to major in chemical engineering. That's a really good school for chemical engineering. And Brendan's going to Wichita State to major in biological engineering. That is Brandon here. That's Brandon on the left. Austin on the right. Austin, Brandon. Yeah. Contents. Okay, so we only have four things. It's the problem, the solution, lab work results, outreach and awareness. So I promise I won't speak anymore. I'm talking about personal life or anything like that. <laughs> okay, the problem. So before we started the iGEM, we went around our school and asked people what's what's the worst part of the day and everything. Um, they hated waking up. Teenagers hate waking up. They can't get to sleep. Who here has an alarm clock? Raise your hand if you have an alarm clock. Who here likes the sound of the alarm clock? Well, that's great, that's great. We have a bunch of uh, market here. So, sleep deprivation, you can't get a lot of sleep, see so people sleepwalking, you fall asleep in class, and on a more serious note, um, a lot of people die every year from sleeping behind the wheel of a car, so you need to watch out for that. Aromacology is the use of natural odors to perform a function in the body, otherwise used by medicine or something like that. So here in aromacology, you smell something you like, like a flower. In this case, it's bananas, because bananas are just awesome. And what happens next is that smell goes to your nostril, gets converted to a, um, a signal for your neurons. It goes to a little one area. It's a limbic system. The limbic system is responsible for your emotions and memories. So it will take it, and every stimuli has an emotion attached to it. And it will release serotonin, which will make you relaxed and sleepy. So you smell something good and get relaxed and sleepy if you like what you smell. I'm not going to like my gym clothes, so I'm not going to sleep when I smell that. Now, when we decided to do our IGEM project, we decided to fight insomnia and the trouble of falling asleep. And since I'm a physical guy, I like to know what I'm going against, we decided our enemy was insomnia and it was a dragon. And now I'm going to hand it off, the aroma clock, to Mr. Graham Raymond. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So our project this year focused on the aroma clock. Now, the aroma clock is a wonderful, wonderful strain of bacteria that uh, when it's shining out, when the sun first rises, it'll produce an invigorating wintergreen smell to wake you up, you know, get you ready for the day. You'll smell you're like, oh man, I love me, right? Uh, at night, when you kind of want to fall asleep, you know, if you're tired, you can't fall asleep, it'll produce a banana smell, soothing, calming, let you fall asleep real nice. <laughs> night mode. Um, this is a tinker cell model of how our uh, system works at night. So there's no photon hitting the CPH1 light receptor. When that happens, uh, the ENVZ protein, which is in complex with the CPH1 light receptor, uh, is activated. The ENVZ protein then phosphorylates OMVAR. The phosphorylated OMVAR, which is a transcription factor, uh, will activate the OMPC promoter, then codes for the ATF1 gene, which is our banana odor generator. Now, the ATF1 gene uh, codes for alcohol acetyltransferase, uh, which we isolated from yeast. Uh, alcohol acetyltransferase uh, catalyzes 
isoamyl alcohol to isoamyl acetate, which has a very pleasing banana you smell. In the day, when there's light hitting the uh, CPH1 receptor, E and VZ1 NAND doesn't like light, doesn't do anything. Doesn't phosphorylate op R, right? That non phosphorylated op R activates the op F promoter. And that promoter runs the BSMT1 gene, which produces this enzyme. SAM benzoic acid, salicylic acid, uh, carboxyl methyl transferase 1, which is really long and I really don't want to say it again. So, that's the BSMT1 gene. Um, the BSMT1 enzyme catalyzes the conversion of a salicylic acid to methyl salicylate, which has a very pleasing wintergreen smell. Uh, this was isolated from uh, the petunia and snapdragon plants, which, if you like, good for you. <laughs> Uh, we are planning on a, or the system will be designed in two plasmids. Uh, one will contain the banana uh, odor generator right here, so there's the promoter, the ATF1, um, and that's in the plasmid PSB1A2. The other plasmid is the mint odor generator, which is right here, BSMT1 gene, and the CPH8 uh, light sensor, so it's the light sensor. Um, we are planning on co-transforming those two into bacteria. Uh, the banana plasmid contains the OMC promoter uh, part, the BBA, or 0082, which activates transcription when there are high amounts of OMP are phosphorylated, and the banana odor generator itself. So picture that. Uh, the mint plasmid has the OMP F promoter, uh, the mint odor generator, and the RBS and terminators that go with that. Uh, and the light sensor protein complex. And there's that. I would now like to turn it over to Mr. Jonathan Hermanson. Wonderful, wonderful guy. <laughs> so, now that you guys know a little about our plasmid, we're going to teach you guys about our lab work and what our results were. For the past six months, the Bioscience CAPS research team has been working hard on trying to perfect our plasmid in our bacterial strain. We started off with our transformation. We used the New England BioLabs High Efficiency Transformation. There are 10 steps to success for transformation. So I'm going to read them off for you. We have copies on our wiki page if you want to check those out. With this, we were able to successfully transform strains with the OMC promoter, the banana odor generator, and the mint odor generator. After this, we need to go ahead and do some plasmid purification. With that, we use the Aurorum Plasmid Mini Kit, 12 points to purification. <laughs> right there, we purified the plasmids that we needed in order to make our bacterial strain. Once that was done, we had to quantify. Quantifying allowed us to see how much DNA was actually successfully made in there. We had 20 nanograms per microliter of the OMC promoter, and we had 43 nanograms per microliter of our banana, banana generator, and that was really impressive for us because we, we didn't think we were getting that much DNA out of it, but that was what we had. And back to Grant Waymire, as you see him up there with our spectrophotometer, he's going to talk a little bit more about what we did. All right, so the next step after plasmid purification is restriction digestion. You know, you have to cut all those out in preparation for ligation. So uh, in preparation for ligation, we did restriction digest on the OMC and banana odor generator uh, to make that banana plasmid that you guys saw earlier. Uh, we set them up as suggested by New England Biolabs. We did all that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is, we, we cut the OMC promoter uh, plasmid with S and P. Uh, at the two sites, so that let us insert the banana gene, which we cut at X and P, after the OMC uh, promoter. So it was all in the OMC plasmid that it was in originally because we didn't want to have to deal with such a small fragment of DNA, the promoter. Um, this is a picture of the restriction digest gel that we ran afterwards to separate out the uh, cut and uncut uh, plasmids. And this is a picture I can't see that very well. Um, this is a picture of the gel. Uh, this is a one kilobase pair ladder from NEB. 
This lane is the OMSI digest. Uh, you can't really see it, but that is the cut OMSI uh, plasmid. The banana smell digest, uh, you see we have three uh, lanes, or three lanes of DNA in here. The This one is the cut plasmid with no banana gene in it, so that's just the useless plasmid unit. We don't want that. Um, this one had the banana gene but no plasmid, so that's uh, 1,739 kilobase pairs. And then this one, we uh, the restriction digestion didn't go all the way, so we have an uncut banana gene and plasmid. So that's the combination of those two uh, lanes. Uh, after that, we did a gel extraction to get the DNA out in preparation for ligation. Uh, we used the Sigma Gene Loop gel extraction kit and. That is a picture of me cutting out the gel. And so that's all the lab work that we did. Uh, we're planning on ligating the two parts together uh, soon in the future um, so we can finish that portion of it. And then next step is the mint plasmid. So I would now like to hand it off to Mr. Timothy Schaefer again. Thank you very much, Mr. Graham. Caps Engineering, future useless, future uses. So we're also going to partner with another class in our, strand, our school called the Engineering Strand. We're not the nerds, they are, right? So um, they're going to help us actually build the alarm clock. There's a little signal, you know. You just, oh, this is so much better looking than that, I think, personally. <laughs> then we have the Roma clock put into action. We're going to, after they come up with us, and they're going to tell us all the nerdy stuff they know, we're going to make ourselves an Roma clock so you can fall asleep easier. That's going to be nice. We're also going to sell the product, attempt to sell it, because we're probably going to run out of stock and be so popular. We're going to have to get something like this going on, because this is just going to be such a good product. <laughs> and goodbye sleep problems. I can get back to that. But more aromacology applications, Alzheimer's. So when I told you every stimuli has a memory and an emotion attached to it, that's very important. Because in the brain, emotions can also activate memories. So say something like, for someone developing Alzheimer's, if they have a smell which will evoke an emotion to help them with their memory, they're not going to, they're going to have more memories. Like, no. They're going to have a better time retaining their memories in the cerebral cortex. And, most important part, no more sleep problems. You're going to be obviously sleeping like Garfield. <laughs> now your human practices, I'd like to introduce Mr. Ryan. Here's your board. Thank you. All right, this is our human practices section. We all learned our, uh, our synthetic biology from our CAPS bioscience class. We did the PIVO lab, and that helped us learn about transformations. And uh, then a few of the representatives from our team went to uh, Missouri Western University and uh, listened to Todd, Dr. Todd Ekdahl uh, have his lecture about uh, synthetic biology, and then have hand-on hands-on labs using bio bricks to do the project. <laughs> um, during our summers, we have programs where we have invite middle school students to come to the CAS facility so they can get like a leg up on their sciences or their future classes, however they want to do it. Uh, we had uh, this bioscience, sorry, close to my mouth, okay. Uh, and we did the PICO lab with these 25 middle schoolers and they uh, completed a sexual, uh, successful trans transformation. <laughs> Uh, we also had the KSU engineering camp where uh, we had ninth graders also complete the 3A assembly kit. And there's a picture of a completed 3A assembly kit and one of the kid, middle school kids working with a high school teacher. And uh, then our elementary school outreach, we're going to have Tim explain this to us. For, we all went to an elementary school, to a second grade class, it was very fun, they're very energetic, and we talked to them about DNA and how that related to forensics. Um, what we learned is that second graders are a whole different breed of people, and they really <laughs> like puzzles. <laughs> Safety, we made sure we wore lab coats to, expect, to protect us from explosions, goggles <laughs> for our eyes, and gloves, and we did not contaminate anything. I didn't even contaminate <laughs> Acknowledgements. All I would like to thank first and foremost our advisor teachers, Mr. Joe Whalen and Miss Erica Kessler. Uh, special thanks to Natalie Cunnell at BioBuilder, Todd Ekdahl at Missouri Western, and Alyssa Henning at Ginkgo BioWorks. Okay, here are lessons learned from iGen. 
So as you see, we have our acronym for iGEM that we took upon ourselves to modify that we felt was more like iGEM. Innovation. During those six months, I guess CAPS, <laughs> one of their main driving forces is behind innovation. The first day we get there, they're driving into our minds. Innovation, innovation is key for the future. And through these processes, through this iGEM, we were able to innovate and create new things for the world that help benefit whoever and whatever anyone's project was able to do. And that was just great that we were able to do that. All right, for the G for give and take, uh, anything you do in life, you're going to have to give and you're going to take some uh, to get better at anything. Uh, here we learned, um, and we learned all about the synthetic biology. We gave our time outside of school during our summer when we could be outside, and we, you know, did labs. It's fun, and uh, yeah. Speaking of fun, uh, <laughs> entertainment. We are all about entertainment, and synthetic biology is fun. I'm having a great time. Um, so, uh, you know, if you can't make things interesting, you know, what's the point in doing them? But iGEM is interesting, it's fun, it's innovative, you know, you can do whatever you want to do. And so uh, I thought that that was a really huge part of this uh, portion. I had a great time, as did everybody else. And the most important part was moving forward. This is going to look great when I'm applying for Hopkins. It, 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 it looks great at West Point, too. But also moving forward in, in general for science. It's not about the grades and the colleges, but I know a lot about synthetic biology. I didn't even know what it was before this year. It's like synthetic biology is, what is that? Is that what I make the food here with? But um, anyhow, I'd like to end it with our group cheer that we made just recently. Okay. I'm staff. You don't need this on the official records. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.